Hello, everybody. My guest today is Mark Abbott. He shares a passion for farms, food, and community wellness with his wife and two school-aged kids. He's a founding team member of AmeriCorps and past director of the Poverty Program at the C.S. Mott Foundation. He's got a Ph.D. in economic anthropology from the University of Pittsburgh and startups in the nonprofit and for-profit sectors. He's the founder and CEO today of Farm Razor, a platform for service, a platform and service for healthy product fundraising. Mark, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. All right. So let's uh, let's double down here on Farm Razor. I know you're doing a lot, but what does Farm Razor specifically do, and what's the revenue model? How do you, how do you make money? So basically, it's a it's a marketplace and a and a service that allows anyone with a healthy product to make it available for school or group fundraising. So the purpose of Farm Razor is to blow up the fundraising industry, where that usually sells pizza, cookie dough, gift wrapping paper, lots of goods that are high, the low value, high cost with low profit for the causes. So farm raisers trying to reinvent that model by d- directly connecting people with great products that would like to make them available for fundraisers in their community and folks n- needing to make money. What do you mean by, f- by fundraising? So for example, I'm in, I'm on your site now. I'm in Austin. I see honeycomb by the Austin honey company, $28 and 29 cents suggested selling price. So who is the person that's usually looking at this, a, gro- a local grocery store? No, actually, it's going to be like the local PTA organizer. So your school is going to do a fundraiser. Instead of asking for a cash donation, they're going to sell something. They would normally sell a really poor product, but we're going to have them sell something grown or made in your community. Oh, so I see. We sell like CSA baskets for, for farm fresh produce or fruit or honey or coffee is a big one that we, we sell a lot of. There's a lot of local roasteries out there. So we take healthy products that are not sugar laden junk food. We make them available in a wholesale market that you as an organizer can come select those products, see the wholesale price, price them for retail and launch them in a crowdfunding site. That crowdfunding site then would the students at your school or your cause can sell using their phones or by sharing a link on Facebook or email. And they could do a old fashioned school fundraising digital. This is like Using a healthier, products. sexier way. When I was on the tennis team back in high school and we got a box of 30 things of, uh, of kind bars or sugar, like candy bars. And I had to go sell them in my local neighborhood. That's exactly right. So we did We, we automated the entire process from A to Z to make it really easy for an organizer to have a sale like that. They did, it's all pre-sale. So we reserve product ahead of time and we made it and really easy for folks that have great products that want to get new customers in their community to, to make those products available for fundraising. So for example, the honeycombs, if you want to have two or 300 folks try your product in Austin and, that, and then feel really good about it because it was in support of a cause they believed in and then get their email address to talk to them later about how they like the product and where they can buy it again, then this platform is for you. So, so just to be clear, uh, a, not, bo- a booster club that wants to make money though via a fundraiser what you're saying is they're going to spend money anyway on the thing that they're going to sell which is, used to be maybe an unhealthy candy bar now i'm looking at the honeycomb here it's 28 29 suggested selling price if they buy all this honeycomb through you though what are they what are they paying you for the hard cost of goods sold so it's it's so no money changes hand up front it's all a pre-sale so if it says suggested retail 28 dollars, they're going to buy it for about 14 dollars Okay. And so, they're gonna, so they're, their wholesale cost is about 50% of retail uh, in general. And then they're going to, but they're going to take a whole bunch of orders ahead of time, like a pre-sale. Yep. So our system will reserve that product for them, say 300 units, and they'll sell against that reservation. When the sale's all done after two weeks or so, we'll see that they sold 100 units. The system will place an order for 100 units. It will show up two weeks later for distribution with the correct forms and everything for them to use to make that day go smoothly for their school fundraiser. And then they get a check from us so and just, the supplier gets a check from us. I was gonna say, so just to be clear, so 50% of the, the, of that money that came in will ba- basically be, that's, that's what the, what the booster club raised. The rest is 50%. Yes. You're paying the actual supplier. Where's your cut come in? So we do, we have, we take out from both sides of the platform. We take a little bit from the supplier. So by adding on a small fee to each unit sold, not dissimilar to what Airbnb does. And then on the backside, we take five to 10% of the retail price. So the end consumer is paying a little bit as well. Okay. You're building that, this suggested retail price of 28, 29 has that already, or you're taking that in? It does. It does. No, it has already. Yep. Okay. Um, interesting. Okay. So, so I'm trying to think, think about what metrics are most important for you to determine if this thing is a success or not. So what are you tracking? Number of dollars raised, number of fundraisers, 
So we track a lot of different, we track about 28 different things, but the, we, the revenue driving things that we like to pay attention to are the number of campaigns on the platform. Okay. So how many organizations come in and do a fundraising campaign with us and how many of them do a second and third one? Basically, once you do two, you're going to do five um, on average. So that's our churn rate. We pay attention to that. We also look at how much you raise. So a typical fundraising campaign will sell about $3,000 worth of product. Which is, which, which is about $270 for us, right? So we're watching that metric also of how much, and, and then diving into that a little bit, we're looking at what products you're selling, what the average price point of the product is, what the markup of the price is, because you can adjust your markup as an organi- organizer. You're not locked into a price. You can actually custom make your prices. And, if they want to take, if they want to essentially raise more money for themselves. Yes. Yeah. So without, you know, and we try to say, you know, we try to say, listen, this has got to be a great deal for the supplier because they're giving you a wholesale. They're getting a wholesale, pro, you know, price for their product, which covers their costs, and they're getting a customer email for every sale. Uh, it's got to make you at least forty. Who's getting the Who's up. getting the customer email though? The Booster Club or the the product the Booster Club is selling? The Honeycomb Company. The Honeycomb Company is getting. Oh, the, I see. I see. So there's value for both of them. Well, they're valuing on both sides of the platform. So, you know, to be a great marketplace, you've got to have a lot of liquidity. So yep. both players have to be able to make money and see a value prop that makes sense to them. So over, supply- the, over the past, let me let me get these numbers over the past 12 months. Over the past 12 months, how many campaigns for the platform? So we did about 350 campaigns on okay. the platform the last 12 months. And you make, you said on average about 270 per, per campaign? Yes. Okay, so 270 times 350, obviously we can do that math. Um, and then... And then what is the... Um, so we're small yet. We, we're really just getting going. Um, no, no, I, by the way, I don't I think small is fine, right? 270 times 350 campaigns, that's what, 100, 100 grand in revenue for yourself, something like that. Um, but but more importantly, right? So let's, uh, how many like SKUs have moved? How many products have been sold? Right, so so uh, over uh, over the course of the last three <laughs> years, we've sold over a million dollars in products and we've, 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 we've got 2,600 SKUs available on the platform. A typical campaign will, will put between three and 10 SKUs in their market. We coach them to keep the market small unless it's a garden seed sale or something that has many, many different products in it. Um, so we're kind of agnostic as to the number of, we don't like a lot of SKUs that makes the sale complicated. You said 2,600 SKUs though available? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, but they but they put two to three in the fundraiser. Right. Because you've got nationally available products. Um, they can be, you can be anywhere and you can sell this product and it'll be drop shipped to your school at the end of the sale. Or you can find stuff that's made or grown right in your community by uh, by proximity by your neighbor, yeah, yeah, and that's the you know, that's kind of tapping into the share economy. Uh, you know, we modeled ourselves after Airbnb, frankly, because we think it's a great model. You've got you, this excess capacity of products. You've got people that really want to use those products. We they meet in our marketplace and, and create value on both sides. Is there a SaaS component to this, or it's all just two hundred seventy? It's just all percentage oh, of raised. There absolutely is because okay. when we realized we were the only ones out there that managed to completely automate this product fundraising business, which is a, about a two a twenty billion dollar industry in North America. And no one has the tools we have on, to manage your inventory, to track your sales, to actually make a crowdfunding site available. Yeah. Mark, by the way, I get the value of the product. I'm just trying to understand the economics behind it. So who is who is paying the flat fee per month, which is the SaaS model? So the SaaS model flat fee are other fundraising companies. So if you are a nursery and you do about a million dollars a year in fundraising, it's going to take you three to four people to run that business. But you can run it on our platform with one person and a distribution center. So we move all of the logistics out of your fundraising business onto our platform and all you have to do is fulfillment. So all your fundraising business turns into a giant wholesale account or a series of accounts that you do fulfillment for and all the other parts of the fundraising come to FarmRaiser and we manage it for you using our technology. And what do people pay on average for that per month or per year? So because our revenue model is based on transactions, we, we charge a very um, nominal amount. So it's between so it's still the same. It's still the same two seventy. Then it's still like two seventy on the average three thousand and, and raised. Yes. Okay. Got it. So again, just to be clear, there isn't a flat fee people are paying for the software. It's a success yes, there fee. Is. There actually absolutely is. It's, okay. But it's it's nominal. It's between five hundred and fifteen hundred dollars for every fundraising company that signs up on the platform per if month. You're a coffee roaster. You're not going to pay that because you're just mark making- is that per month or per year? Uh, that's per year. Okay, five five hundred to fifteen hundred per per year. Okay, and how many how many of those companies have you signed up on the platform? 
So we've got about 30 of those companies on the platform and we add two or three a month right now. Okay. Some of them are large, like Equal Exchange is a $70 million a year company that does you know, organic coffee and tea and, and chocolate. Um, they're moving their entire catalog fundraising business onto the farm raiser platform um, because they recognize that there's massive value proposition for them in automating their current process. Got it. So 30 of these folks paying call it, we'll do the minimum 500 bucks per year. This is a new line of business where you're doing about 1200 bucks a month right now, but it sounds like you're doing this, you're doing the other stuff. You have a bunch of kind of ecosystem plays well, remember here. The $1,200 a month also translated, translates into X amount of campaigns and those campaigns also pay us. Hold on, just to be clear, I thought you said that the 500 bucks or 1500 was per year, not per month. It is, but if you're paying that per year and I'm getting 100 campaigns from you per month, that 100 campaigns is translating into- No, I get revenue. that. That's, totally get um, that. You just said, that, you, I just wanna make sure I didn't hear, you just said $1,200 per month. Just to be clear, it's it's per year. And then on top of that, you're getting the percent, 8% on any things they put through you. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, have you bootstrapped this or raised? We've raised. Okay, how much have you raised? Raised just over a million dollars. Okay, and uh, why raise? Why not bootstrap? Uh, the technology is hard to build, so it took us a while. We, you know, we ran almost seven months worth of campaigns without writing any code because we wanted to make sure that we were actually solving some problems that people would respond to when we released the technology. And then we've done two versions of the of the stack, and we've also done the mobile applications. So you've got a fairly heavy upfront tech cost. Um, the, we're at a place now where we can see the break even for farm raiser. Uh, so we want to get there before we take any more money. When do you think that'll happen? What month? Um, so we should be there um, by the end of this fiscal year. Uh, we should be looking at a volume that allows us to break even. That's great. So break even by end of year 2019. And how aggressive are you being right now in terms of investing in growth? In other words, are you burning 10 grand a month right now, 100 grand a month? So we we've, we went from a high last year of around 50 grand a month. We backed that down right now as we're starting uh, the season. It, it is very cyclical for us. Well, most of our campaigns are in, in, in right before school's out and then right when school's back in the spring and fall. So we've tamped that down a little bit. Most of our money right now is going in supporting our direct sales for the new SaaS customers and our inbound marketing on Facebook uh, for the organic uh, traffic that comes to the site, finds amazing products and launches the campaign. So what, you're burning call it maybe 40 grand in cash per month now today? Uh, we're, we're, we've tapped down around 35. That's great, okay, good. And you've got, again, if you raised a million bucks, obviously you have runway there. So you have plenty of runway to get through this year to try and hit profitability. So yeah, we've raised this money in a rolling basis. So ah. it's a, the, the runway is not as long as I would like it to be. But so, you know, we're, we're looking at runway through most of this year. That's good. Uh, so That's good. It's a, it, you know, it, it is not ideal, but it's where we are. What's the uh, team size today? So we've got a, a team of developers that are offshore. And then I've got four full-time people here in Arlington uh, that work with me. Okay. How many though? The development team. The developer. Yeah. Uh, we have three uh, on the development team that are almost full time, and then the four full time folks here, and then myself uh, and our and my co founder, my CTO. Okay, so nine people based between kind of Maryland and remote, uh, Virginia and remote. Yes, and remote. Very good. All right, very good stuff. Um, uh, let's uh, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Uh, Mark number one. What's your favorite business book? <laughs> I forgot about the famous five. Yeah. So oh, do you, I, do you listen to the show? I do. I, I forgot about the famous five, so I don't know if I'm going to be ready for this. <laughs> that's okay. Well, what's the last book you read? Uh, that's a great question. I haven't read a good book in a while. That's um, okay. We'll put none. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, of course, I'm following Bezos because he's going to be my new neighbor. And, uh, and, and much of what they did in their marketplace, uh, we like. And much of it that we don't like, we think we can beat them at. Yeah. Number three, uh, about, he's literally going to be your new neighbor in Crystal City. Literally, yeah, yes, quite literally. And the same, 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 um, same, um, same build a set of buildings, actually. Yep, yep. All right, number three. Uh, what is uh, your favorite online tool for building the company? Oh, so we use a lot. Um, and so we we like Stripe right now. Um, you know, because uh, that's our paywall and it's been very flexible for us. Um, we do we do agile development, so we're, so we've got that set of tools. Um, right now, my absolute favorite tool, because we just rolled out a whole new set of um, screens, is, is Hotjar. Yep. Uh, Hotjar gives me access to exactly what's happening on the platform. I love it. You can track it all out with the user sessions. It's a powerful tool. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? About six. And situation, married, single kids? I've got, I'm married. I've got, as far as I know, I've got uh, two high school aged kids, one starting college next year, one is a freshman that plays hot. That's exciting. And how old are you? 
I'm just turned 52. Congratulations. And last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Say that again. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Oh gosh, that I sh- that <laughs> that I should have stuck with the first couple companies I started when I was twenty, and then not waited so long to do another one. Guys, don't wait so long to get into entrepreneurship. Launched FarmRaiser a couple years ago. Now working with over uh, thirty groups, really doing fundraising or, or basically fundraising companies. Now using his SaaS platform. He's got a big ecosystem play here, though. They're tracking many different things. Uh, really replacing the old kind of high school PT booster club fundraising model with you know junk food. To to, hey, you know, let your let your people sell local goods, local things. They take a small cut of that. They've raised a million bucks to build out the ecosystem, the mobile app, the website, uh, the marketplace, scaling with nine people between Virginia and remote locations as they look to get to break even by the end of this year. Mark, thanks for taking us to the top. Nathan, that's fabulous. Thank you very much. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.